I spent 20 hours building this Durburger castle in expert mode. After getting all three trophies, this was my first detailed village that I built in my expert world. Before we get into it, I figured I'd give you guys a tour of the rest of my expert world. And if you want to see more village tours, be sure to subscribe because I have over 10 highly detailed villages and I'm working on uploading tours for all of them. So let's hop in the car and I'll take you guys to some of my original villages I built here. So technically, I can't take you to my original Grasslands village because I have deleted it. So my original Grasslands Village used to be right here. However, I deleted it so I could get all the upgrade materials back so I can move it over here to build the Durburger Village. So this was actually the perfect starting location because as you can see, I had a Grasslands Cave here right on the border to the Dry Valley. Then my original Desert Village is right up here just to the Northeast. So let's hop back in the car and we'll get going over there. So this is my original Desert Village. And as you can see, there's not much to look at. And that's because as soon as I left leveled this village up to level 10 and got my trophy, I immediately packed everything up and moved on to the Frostlands. So I took all my items, all my crafting benches and everything else so I could start the village over in the Frostlands and get that trophy. However, I did leave the original trophies here that I placed and the village outpost because I do plan to make a desert village eventually. I forgot to bring a cool headed charm, so let's get back in the car and head over to my original Frostlands village. So for this world, I actually used an entirely new seed. I didn't use any existing seed to make this world. However, I did get pretty lucky and spawned really close to a sandwich of grasslands, desert, and frostlands. So my original frostlands village is right down here. So as we pull up to my original frostlands village, you might notice it's a lot like my desert village in that there's not a lot here. And again, the reason that is, is as soon as I leveled this village up to level 10 and ended up getting my frostlands trophy, I packed everything up so I could go build the Durburger village. But again, I left the original trophies and the village outpost because I will eventually make a detailed Frostlands village. I was honestly just trying to make these villages as efficient as possible so I could get my trophies before I tried to build anything really fancy. So you might have noticed I actually have some other villages on the map here, and this one here is actually my Durburger village, but these three here are actually just villager outposts. So starting out at this outpost to the north, it's actually just a level 10 Grasslands village, and all I have here are beds and some workstations. So I will get around to making these these villages a little more fancy and detailed, but for now, I want as many villagers as possible working for me. So you can actually have seven villagers per village, and I'm actually waiting on one more here. So what I've done is between these four villages, they are as close together as they can possibly be, and they're all just loaded up with villagers that are on jobs. This way I can start off at my Dur Castle and then move from outpost to outpost to outpost and collect from all 30 of my villagers. Well, technically 28 between four villages, but I plan on adding a couple more villagers here in the Frostlands. This next outpost is maybe 200 meters away, and it is basically the same thing, just a village outpost, some beds, and some workstations. However, this third villager outpost, I actually have started working on making it into a detailed village. I should be finished with the build fairly soon, but if you want to see it early, you can always check me out live on Twitch and TikTok at 7 p.m. Eastern every day. All my builds are done on live stream, and I'd love to have you if you have any questions about building or LEGO Fortnite in general. So now that I've properly introduced you to my expert world, let's get into the tour. So like I said, this is actually my first detailed village that I've built in expert mode, although I have over 10 villages built in my survival world. This village I wanted to be big enough to be a storage base, but not such a big and square storage base that it ended up being boring. So down here on the first level, it's not the best storage system I've ever made, but it uses some of the upside down building techniques, and I have this chest tunnel here. So in my survival world, I have what I call the Durport, and in there I have a giant storage building that just has rows and rows of chests, and it's very neatly organized, and it's very easy to find what I want. So I'll probably end up making a huge storage village like that in this world eventually, but for now, I really wanted a village that just looked good from the outside, but also had the capability of some pretty good storage. Also, let's give you guys a quick crash course on how to do the sideways and upside down building techniques. Basically, it comes down to thrusters. You're going to either put it on the wall or the ceiling, depending on if you want your item on the wall or the ceiling. So once we have our thruster on the wall, what we're going to do is pull out any item we want to put on the wall, and we're going to aim our crosshair right at the base of the thruster. So if if I want to take this potted plant, for example, and put it on the wall, 
I'm gonna aim my crosshair right at the base of the thruster. And you'll notice when we do that, the item is gonna turn sideways. Now again, you don't wanna look further up because if you look further up on the thruster, it's gonna bring it back away from the wall. So once you get your crosshair lined up and it's touching the wall, then you wanna use the nudge feature to nudge it away from the thruster without moving your camera. And then once it's highlighted in green, you're able to place it. And you can essentially do this with any item you want, including a toilet on the ceiling. So the overall vibe that I was going for here was kind of like White Castle, but with Durburger. So obviously I'm a huge fan of the Durburger building kit. However, the inspiration for this build came from the re-release of the Knights of the Food Court pack. In my opinion, they're some of the best Lego outfits they've released yet. So I just had to give Sir Burger a proper home. One thing I'll mention is I'm technically not finished because although I have the outside of the building decorated, there's still all of this insides that I need to add decorations to and the same goes for these townhouses the only one I've actually mildly decorated is this one the reason I haven't decorated yet is because I need to produce some more burgers with my cows here and the backside of the building here actually doesn't have any decoration on the structure so I want to wait until this is decorated before I go through and do the interior decoration because I'm Still not sure where I'm gonna land with the build complexity here. So the first floor is just my storage and my work area, but even though the inside isn't decorated to the max, I still do have flooring and stairs going up to all the different levels here. The only detail I've really added on the inside are these chairs and umbrellas, but that's mostly because they're seen from the outside. At this village, I don't have my ideal lineup of villagers, but I got Beef Boss. My goal in this village is to mostly collect the costume characters like Peely, Beef Boss, Tomato Head, that kind of thing. So I haven't built a flying machine yet in my expert world, mostly because flying machines tend to be extremely unreliable, especially lately, but I do have a landing pad here for a flying machine. One of my favorite details of the village is that each of these towers actually are a different height and feature a different crown to the top of the tower. So this tower features a building that uses the Durberger roof that contrasts the roof that I used over here. And then this tower over here is a little bit shorter and doesn't have any sort of structure on it other than the decorations. And then this third tower is actually the shortest between the three, but it features a small structure on the top on top of the decorations. Another contrasting design I made was on this left side here, I made bridges. And then on the right side, I made a little bit of a balcony with a roof on top of it. So with the bridges, over here not only did I add two bridges but I made the bottom one wider and the top one a little bit thinner again to add contrast one thing you might notice is on the face of these two towers I actually did the opposite of contrasting and I actually matched the exact window designs from one tower to the other on these two faces and then this is the best angle to show it but then again the face of that tower and the face of that tower there are also mimicked in their technique so there's certain parts of the build where I'll contrast in the design, and then there's other parts of the build where I will rhyme and mimic other parts of the design. One question I get a lot is, how did I get my expert trophies at a 45 degree angle? And how did I get that star pattern? So for the 45 degree angle building technique, I'm not gonna get into it in this video. However, Grind Geek here on YouTube has a fantastic video here covering it. So I'll go ahead and link that down in the description because that's actually how I learned how to do the technique. Then when it comes to this star pattern here, you're gonna need Lockie's Lighthouse from the item shop. With that kit, you get these seaworthy wide floors and if you put them together in a certain pattern, it will make a star in the center. So not only do the trophies fit inside this star, but so does the village outpost, so it looks fantastic out here in the courtyard. The last thing I wanted to show you was these townhouses. So if you have the Lion Knight's Castle bundle, you'll notice that the prefabs do use these parts. However, they don't have a prefab for one of these townhouses by itself. So I've actually developed a few different townhouse designs, and this one in particular, I actually have a tutorial for and don't think because you don't have the lion knight's castle that you can't follow this tutorial because i actually built it in anarchy acres style which again is another paid kit but i also built this exact design 
in the cabin decor so it looks like a cabin instead. So if you want to add some more custom designs to your villages but aren't exactly experienced yourself in designing them, be sure to check out that video as well. This base isn't entirely finished, but after I end up decorating the insides, I'll probably upload a part two of this tour. But like I said, be sure to check me out on TikTok and Twitch. I'm live daily at 7 p.m. Eastern. Right now, I'm actually working on a Shogun Castle hybrid village. It should be done fairly soon, but if you want to see the tour when it gets uploaded, be sure to subscribe. But for now, I got to get back to building, so I'll see you guys on the next video.